Hmm. Missing property. What kind of property? Hmm. How do I put this in a way you'll understand? All you know of robots are those buckets of bolts, those Mr. Handshakers and whatnot. Handshakers? Well, that's not all a robot can be. You see, in the Commonwealth, we've made artificial persons, synthetic humanoids, programmed to think and feel and do whatever we need. Uh huh. And occasionally, they get confused and wander off. I see. So, um... That's interesting, but what exactly does this have to do with me? You're helping me retrieve this android, aren't you? I've Am I? Him this far. He's out there somewhere, in the capital wasteland. He mm -hmm. must have done something drastic, like facial surgery and a mind wipe, or else I would have found him by now. It will be no easy task. He may not even realize he's an android. Don't upset him by talking with him. Just come get me immediately. I'll handle it. So, uh, I'll be compensated for my services, right? Of course! I have at my disposal advanced technology from the Commonwealth. I'd be willing to share some of it with you. Just think, you'll be the envy of all your friends. Sure, I'll look into finding your android for you. Excellent! Locate my android, and you won't be disappointed. Here, listen to this message he sent me. He's mocking me. I swear, I'll make him pay for that. Um, okay. So, uh, any suggestions for finding this android? Like I said... I suspect he's had facial reconstruction and possibly even a mind wipe. Search the offices of doctors or techies for android information. If he's come into contact with these people, there may be records. Start with Dr. Preston. He lives on this leaky boat. See if he knows anything. He's a doctor, after all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy trying to ignore my surroundings. You are such a pompous bastard. So, if this android wandered off, why would he want a new face and mind? Maybe. Maybe he didn't exactly wander off. Maybe he fled. Escaped captivity, as it were, if he began to misinterpret his situation. It's possible my android sought to forget his previous life. Wipe away all memory, all guilt. Trick himself into believing he really is human. So mm -hmm. no, he may not be just an ordinary robot, but he's certainly not human. No matter how badly he wishes it so. I made him. I want him. End of story. So you basically treat him like he's a toy that you made to play with. Awesome. So, why would an android feel any guilt? Come on, Zimmer. Why aren't you telling me? By God, you're as annoying as you are clever. Very well. I'll tell you what you want to know, if it helps you locate my property. The duty of this particular unit was the hunting and capturing of other escaped androids. Yes, others have escaped. Mm -hmm. It's one of the side effects of having such an advanced AI. Machines start to think for themselves, fool themselves into believing they have rights. And so, this particular android may have believed he'd done something wrong, immoral, and wanted to forget those deeds. Satisfied now? Sure. So, uh, I'd like to know more about what I'm dealing with. What exactly is an android? Forget everything you know about robots. Those buckets are mere children's toys compared to the real thing. Androids have fake skin and blood and are programmed to simulate human behavior, like breathing. They can even eat and digest food realistically. Interesting. Ah, uh, alright. 
Okay, so if others have escaped, why are you coming after this particular one? This particular android. Designation A321 is different, special, the most advanced synthetic humanoid I've ever developed. The others, like my escort Armitage there, are all older models, easily replicated. Ah, but A321? It will take years to recreate him. So you see, this android must be located at all costs. The others are all acceptable losses, but A321, he is irreplaceable. You're kind of a jerk. So, uh, tell me about the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth itself is nothing but a war-ravaged quagmire of violence and despair. Inside the sealed environment of the Institute, however. But the Institute's affairs are none of your concern. Your undeveloped mind couldn't even begin to comprehend what we've accomplished. I feel like I want to chop off your head with every word you're saying, but I'll refrain for the moment. Do you know anything about the history of Rivet City? I'm sure you don't since you're from the Commonwealth, but it's worth a shot. Looks to me like a giant boat ran aground and a bunch of savages moved in. History lesson over. You're an asshole. I gotta go. Of course you do. Uh-huh. If I ever see you again, your head's going to go off. Let me tell you. That is just not... Not nice. The way you talk and bullshit and such. Hmm? Lay a hand on Dr. Zimmer and I'll snap your neck like a chicken bone. Wow. Hurry up! Even your android's an asshole. Hey there, Anna. What do you need? I'm uh, looking for my father. Have you seen him? Look, some of us are trying to get work done here. There have been enough disruptions recently. Anybody coming through here would have to talk to Dr. Lee. Why don't you go bother her about it? Why are scientists such dicks in this game? Jesus. What do you know about Zimmer? He's from up north. He was bragging about how great it is up there. Yeah, great. They can't even keep tabs on their robots. <laughs> is Dr. Lee as smart as they say she is? She's certainly head and shoulders above most everyone else around here. Though, that's not saying much. Hmm. Alright, well, I gotta get going. Bye. See ya. Did you hear about the fight in the muddy rudder last night? No, I didn't. Yeah. Belle's gonna have to replace some tables and chairs. Hmm. I'm sure she'll just scrounge some from the lower deck. Hey there. Hey, what's up, Janice? I'm Janice Kaplinski, chief botanist. What do you need? Uh, what do you know about Zimmer? Other than him being an egotistical, arrogant, condescending pain in the ass? Nothing. I like you. He's from the Commonwealth. He's come looking for some special robot. I must admit I'm rather curious, but I have other work to do. Hmm. Well, at least you're nicer than the other scientists. I'm looking for my father. Have you seen him by any chance? I did see a man talking to Dr. Lee, but I really shouldn't be discussing it. She's already in a bad mood. I'd hate to make it worse. You should probably just talk to her about it. Alright. Do you happen to know anything about the history of Rivet City? If it hasn't got to do with the science quarters, I'm probably not the one to ask. And Dr. Lee's so busy, you really shouldn't disturb her work. Alright. Go. See you later, I guess. So long. At least you're nicer than the rest of these people. Jeez. Yes? Not saying much, considering, uh... Most of the people in this entire wasteland aren't very nice. So it's easy to be nicer. And the androids aren't nice. Alright. So, middle deck, let's do it. Alright, so we need to find Bannon, and we're looking for an android at the moment. And where that android could be, who knows. Guess we'll figure it out soon enough. 
James Hargrave, huh? You probably don't know much of anything. Hey, Tammy. Yeah? What do you want? Jesus. Don't have to be such a bitch. Oh, really? My husband ran off and got himself killed and left me to raise his little brat. So don't you tell me how I should or shouldn't be. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not sure that he's the brat in this room. What do you want? So, where's your family? My mom is probably drunk, and my dad's dead. Is that good enough for you, asshole? Wow. Never mind, you're both assholes. I won't even bother anymore. Hey, May. Stay away from me. What do you want? Are you one of them? What? Um, I'm not gonna hurt you. What are you scared of? I suppose it doesn't matter if I tell you. I used to be a slave. Oh. I saw a slaver on this ship. His name is Sister. Sister? I'm afraid he's after me. Uh-huh. Don't worry, I would never turn in a runaway slave. Really? Oh, thank you. Can you help me? I've Maybe. I'm so worried with him around. I can hardly sleep at night. Um... Well, I, I would kill him myself, but, um... I guess I can't really do that, so here's 25 caps. Maybe you can buy yourself a gun. Thank you. I'll go to Flack and Shrapnel's just before closing. Would you uh, mind me asking about Rivet City's history? I... I don't really know anything about that. I'd appreciate being left alone, please. I just gave you 25 caps. Don't be an ass. See you later. Farewell. Hey, Ted. Sorry to wake you up. I have some questions. Ted Strayer, you can chill with me if you want, dude. Well, you're kind of nice. Sounds like a plan, man. All right, you and me just hanging. Can I uh, ask you about Rivet City's history? Dude, I only just got here myself. Ain't nothing I could tell you. All right, see you later, Ted. Later, dude. You were not helpful at all. Hey, Mr. Lopez. You look old. Maybe you know something. Haven't run into you before. You probably wouldn't remember me anyway. I'm Mr. Lopez. You sound very depressed. Why wouldn't I remember you? Nobody does. I'm not very memorable. Don't worry. It won't be a problem for much longer. That is a very depressing outlook on life. For having such a protected city, people are very, very depressed around here or mad. Hmm. What the hell? Did you just kill yourself? He killed himself. I guess I shouldn't have, uh, have given him that. Sorry, bud. I didn't mean to to kill you. All right. Well, um, apparently Polly Shore is dead. Yes, sir. It's a good day. So, what's the story with Doctor Lee? She's not very social. Stays in her lab in the stern. She's smart though, real smart. Hmm. Why is James such a brat? James's mom, Tammy, is a real bitch. She treats him like crap. I think it's because she drinks too much. Eh. What's it like living on a giant ship? It's noisy, dark, and smelly. But we're safe here. No super mutants or raiders. And maybe Dr. Lee will find a way to get clean water for us. I don't know. It doesn't seem that noisy to me, but whatever. Do the men on this ship give you much trouble? You mean like hitting on me? No. Most of them are polite. Even the ones like Diego that I'd want to flirt with seem to ignore me. Huh. So, you and Diego are in love? Well, one of us is. Huh. Sometimes it seems like he doesn't even know I'm there. Ah. Unfortunately, you can't force a man's attentions. Especially if he is a priest with a thick skull. <laughs> well, I'm not giving up. 
I just know we're made for each other. You go, girl. Could you tell me about Rivet City's history? I heard the place was settled by mercenaries who used to scavenge DC, but I don't really know. All right, well, I gotta get going. Bye. Today we hear the story of Saint Monica. She was Saint Monica. On the shores of the ocean. Whoa. Her parents were both ghouls. Yes, that's right. I said ghouls. That she was conceived at all was a miracle. That she was born unafflicted was an even greater miracle. Why are you talking to yourself? God tested Saint Monica. She did not lead an easy life. Sold into slavery by raiders, she was forced to sell her body. They took her only son, Aaron, from her and sold him. She prayed every night to God for his safety. She did not pray for herself, although her burden was great. Each night, she would preach the This guy is crazy as hell. The slavers. After six How do you walk like that, dude? God it's amazing. A miracle. One of the slavers repented his wicked ways and helped her to escape. Four years, she looked for Aaron. Four <laughs> years, she wandered the wasteland. God looked over her in those years. When she found her son, she found he was a wicked man. Aaron had overthrown his masters and taken their place. He was an owner of men. Aaron took his mother to be his slave, even knowing That's weird. who she was. For Aaron blamed her for his painful early life. Each day, Aaron would think of a new and wicked trial to put her through. She would only smile at him and say, I forgive you. Each morning, she would Sounds be like the Princess Bride. healed as if nothing had happened. When Aaron truly realized her love and God's love was boundless, he flung himself at her feet and begged for St. Monica's forgiveness. Aaron released all of his slaves and they rejoiced. He repented all his wicked ways. Who among us is without sin? Who among us can claim to be innocent? Come, brothers and sisters. Let us pray to God and Saint Monica for deliverance from our sins, as Aaron was delivered from his. Why would you pray Amen. to Saint Monica? Let us pray. That's kind of weird. Anyways, what's up, Father? Hey! I am Father Clifford. This is Saint Monica's church. Hmm. I don't need to hear about Saint Monica. So you're a priest? Yes. My flock is all of Rivet City. You should come to services this Sunday. I'll be telling the tale of Saint Monica. Yeah, I heard it already. You were telling it throughout the entire uh, halls there. So, um, I think Mr. Lopez is kind of suicidal. Yes, I know. I've been counseling him for some time now. He used to go stand on the observation balcony all afternoon. He's down to only an hour or so at three o'clock. Uh-huh. So, uh, what do you know about Rivet City's history? Oh, it's not the past of the city that I dwell upon, but the future of its inhabitants. But if you're interested, I believe Miss Weatherly or Mr. Bannon would be glad to speak with you on the subject. Okay. Well, now we have two people to talk to. I need to get going, Father Clifford. St. Monica bless you. Hey. Sure. It was so noisy last night. I could hardly sleep. Maybe a quick fix has something that will help you sleep. Cindy's got all Everything kinds of Everything looks okay chemicals. here. I'll try that. No, I haven't seen anything. I do the repairs around here, so if you see something that needs fixing, let me know. All right, Henry. Uh, could I talk to you for a second? This place could use a few more people willing to work. Everything is falling apart. I'm the only one willing to fix it. I'm busy. I've got a lot of repairs to make. Well, I guess you're not going to talk to me. Hello. Hey, Diego. I'm Diego, the acolyte for St. Monica's. So, uh, there's a church in Rivet City. Oh, yes. Father Clifford conducts services every Sunday morning. You should come. Mmm, I'll think about it. So, if you're the acolyte, who's the priest? Not that I don't already know. Father Clifford, the sanctuary is in the ship's fore on the upper deck. The good father holds yeah, services in every Sunday morning. Uh-huh. I hear Angela has a crush on you. 
What are you talking about? I'm a man of the cloth. Well, I will be as soon as Father Clifford. Never mind. It doesn't matter what Angela thinks. Soon I will take vows of chastity. Ah, you're a fool to pass up chance at love with Angela. Father Clifford says she is my trial, my temptation. I must choose between her and the church. I have chosen the church. Sure. Alright then.